some more on the, the geometrical representation. So let's look at uh, different shapes. So circles, we talked a little bit about that. So there's our standard circle. And we saw that we could rewrite that now as z times z conjugate equals the radius squared. Or we could now call it the modulus of z is equal to r. Remember, z, z conjugate was x squared plus y squared, but we now know that to be the, uh, well, the modulus. So the modulus is equal to r, but notice, be careful, r, not r squared. r, not r squared. Because z, z conjugate was x squared plus y squared, and that's why you need the radius squared, whereas the modulus of z is the square root of x squared plus y squared, so you only have r. But if you think about it logically, what it's talking about, it's saying all the points such that its distance from the origin is r. So of course we get a circle. It doesn't matter where we are on the circle, we will always be that distance r. Now, if we shift the center to another complex number, what we saw is where we could write that, we could write that as z minus omega times the conjugate of z minus the conjugate of omega. Now, our other way we could now write it is saying, well, hang on, every single point on that circle, its distance from omega is r. So the length of any vector we draw there, joining the center up to a point on the radius, would always have length r. So modulus of z minus omega is equal to r. All right, so let's uh, have a look at some circles. So start with one at the center. We see x squared plus y squared is 16, uh, but they want it in terms of z. So it's simply, well, modulus of z is equal to four. Every point on that circle is four units away from the, the center. Uh, if I wanted to write it in the conjugate form, I could say z, z conjugate is 16. Hmm. This one here needs to complete the square. So half the coefficient of x would be three, half the coefficient of y would be negative two, so we end up with x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared is 25. So we're saying every single point on that circle, the distance to 3 minus 2i. Well, actually, no. It wouldn't be the distance to 3 minus 2i, would it? Because it's z minus the center. So it would be a distance from z to minus 3 plus 2i would always be 5. In conjugate form, that would look like that. So z plus 3 minus 2i conjugate of z, conjugate of 3 minus 2i, so 3 plus 2i is 25. Let's go back the other way. Find the center and radius. Well, when I've written it in this form, it's, it's quite simple because we know it's z minus the center. So I know the center is 5, 1, and the radius is 2. And of course, the, the big mistake people make here, because we're so used to with circles, is to say the radius would be the square root of two, yeah. But remember, it's just the radius in this form. So we get two units. Here's one in conjugate form. And so we center is minus four, minus one. But in this form, uh, it is the radius squared. So the radius would be seven. If you do forget, of course, you could expand the whole thing out and get it back to x squareds and y squareds, and eventually you would get there. Okay, don't recognize it straight away. So if I don't recognize it straight away, that's when I'm going to try and create the Cartesian form. So three, so what are we actually saying? The distance of three times a complex number to the origin is the same as the distance to the point minus two, one. That still doesn't really give me a clue. We can factorize the three, well, that's fine. Mod z is x squared plus y squared. And then on the right-hand side, changing that into real and imaginary, we get x plus 2 squared, y minus 1 squared. Now, it's at this point, I know it's a circle because I can see straight away the coefficients of x squared and y squared are going to end up being the same. Question is, where's its center? What's its radius? So, okay. Uh, it's getting closer. Ugh, fractions. Ugh. But it's easier to complete the square when it's x squared and y squared rather than 8x squared. Wow. There it is in all its glory. So the center is a quarter minus one eighth. The radius, three root five on eight. So you don't initially recognize it, 
get it back into x and y and see what the Cartesian equation is. Z, Z conjugate plus two times Z plus Z conjugates. All right, not 100% sure. So Z, Z conjugate would be X squared plus Y squared. Z plus Z conjugate would be twice the real part. So 2X times by 2, we get 4X. So yes, it is a circle. Uh, X plus 2 squared plus Y squared is 4. Our center, minus 2, 0, radius 2. All right, let's have a look at lines. So the ones that we talked about earlier were horizontal lines. We said that's uh, the imaginary part of the complex number is a constant number. And vertical lines, the real part of a complex number is a constant number. So they're the ones that we've seen, so the basic ones, vertical and horizontal. But what if it's at some angle, which most of the lines we look at are, I suppose, how we end up defining it? You see a line I could think of as a perpendicular bisector of two points. We just need to find those two reference points to define our line. Now, so if I see something like this, the distance of Z to one complex number is always the same as the distance from Z to another complex number. That's going to end up being a line. So here's one. Z minus one minus I is equal to Z plus two plus I. Okay. Well, I know it's going to be a line. I can't immediately tell from the equation what that line's going to be. So let's put it into, break it up, x and y's. x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared is x plus 2 squared, y plus 1 squared. Expand out. Collect like terms. And we have the equation of a line. So 6x plus 4y plus 3 is equal to 0. Because the other way we could do this, if we recognize it straight away and go, hey, I know this is going to be the equation of a line. And I know that is going to be the perpendicular bisector of two points. In this case, the point would be 1, 1 and minus 2, minus 1. So I could say, well, I'm, I'm just finding that perpendicular bisector. Find the midpoint of the two points, minus half, 0. Now I need the slope of the line. Well, the slope that joins those two would be 2 thirds. So the one we want is minus 3 on 2. Point slope formula. And surprise, surprise, we get the exact same equation. This brings up this situation. I'm glad you asked. You get something like this and it simply says sketch. It's not saying find the equation, which is what you were talking about. Then no, don't waste time. Don't waste time, just draw it. That's what they've asked for. Sometimes it'll be obvious, because have a look at this one. Uh, Z plus two, I so the distance to negative two, well, on the Y axis, so two I, uh, to the distance to four I is going to be the same. Well, there's four, there's minus two. Perpendicular bisector of those two points has got to be a horizontal line. Halfway between is one. There it is. I have sketched it. They haven't asked for the equation. Mind you, this particular one, the equation is very easy to find if we had to. Uh, it would just, of course, be y equals one. Rays, if you like, you can think of as vectors. It has a starting point and it has an angle it makes with the x-axis. So that could be defined as the argument of z is equal to theta. Every single point on that ray is making an angle of theta with the horizontal. You'll notice the starting point I have circled. It's not included. And the reason, if you haven't gone in any direction yet, how do you know what the angle is? So you exclude the starting point. If we uh, shift our ray, it's pretty much the same as, as we've seen in the, well, graphing, curve sketching. We've just moved it. So it's going to be the argument of z minus omega shifted the origin to omega is equal to theta. Or another way of thinking about it, every single point on the ray starting at omega uh, would make an angle of theta with the horizontal. Okay, so if I had to sketch this, mod z is always less than 1, but the argument of z is in between naught and pi on 4. So it's like our regions in the plane. Uh, mod z is less than 1 would be circle. Center 1, circumference is dotted, because it's a less than, not a less than or equal to. Argument is in between 0 and pi on 4. Well, that would be the argument of z is equal to pi on 4, and that would be the argument of z is equal to 0. So we're in between those two rays, but inside the circle, so we're inside there, we have a dotted line meeting a solid line, so we should circle the points of intersection 
And yes, we should dot the lines, a bit harder than PowerPoint, uh, we should dot the lines past the, the points of intersection there. Okay. On an again diagram, sketch this one. What do we got? Not, not that hard a question. We've only looked at two things, a circle and a line. Mm, which one? Okay, so the centre is minus 2, 2. But one of the reasons I bring this one up is, but now that we've got that circle there, let's embellish the question a bit. Find all the possible values of the argument of Z. So Z are all the points that lie in that circle. So what are our possible arguments? But if you get this sort of question, you draw in the two tangents to the circle, and that'll give you the two rays, and you just have to work out, okay, well, what are the angles there for these lines? So on our one there, the minimum argument would be pi on two. The maximum argument would be pi. Well, what about if it was minimum maximum values of mod z? We draw a line through the center. Where it meets the circumference will give you the minimum and the maximum arguments. So all right, how far is that? Well, we can work out the distance to the center and we know how far the radius is. Yes, that'll work, won't it? Distance to the center is two root two. We know the radius is two. So therefore the minimum must be two root two minus two and the maximum must be two root two plus two. Okay. Ah, when too much fun can never be enough, eh? Oh, no.